Um, we will see. He's still online, so I don't want to give up hope. He's played... How did he win 10 games? Oh, he's already played a bunch of bowl games. So that's how. But yeah, he just won 10 in a row against Baba Remdev, who's Akshat Chandra. Oh, I would have loved to watch this. Akshat lives in St. Louis. So I would have loved to have watched this one. I wish he, wish he hadn't stopped after only 10 games. So that's sad. So let's chill out here for a little bit, guys. Let's see if we can get Magnus to come back. He's back! He's back! All right, here we go. Now we're now this is real. So if you just got here, Baba Ramdev, it's Akshat Chandra who lives here in St. Louis. Magnus Carlsen just adopted him. 10-0. There was a little pause. We didn't know if they were coming back. And yeah, Magnus, bring out some real stuff. Going for 11 in a row now. I like this line a lot. I do like this pawn structure quite a bit for white. It seems pretty easy to play. You just play, yeah, b4, and it goes back to b3, and you can play c5 here for white. And yeah, typically, you allow this pawn to e4. All seems normal. Magnus bringing out some real stuff here. So very exciting. I can't wait to see what we get to see here. <laughs> so the structure is well known. This pawn structure is well known, so... I don't know how much of this exactly was theory, but holy cow. Holy cow. That's 11 in a row. That's 11 in a row. Dang. All right. I also like, I like how Magnus is playing. This seems like another structure I might get as black. So I do, I do like it. When I get to see Magnus play my stuff. So I'm going to be focused in on the games today, I think. Um, so... I guess this was not a peace blunder. It was some excellent, well-calculated tactics. That D pawn could be dangerous, could be a weakness. So I think a big battle will be, will black collect that D pawn or will it be a thorn? Um, I don't see how that D pawn is going to end up being a strength, but we will see what happens here in this one. But yeah. Hard for me to pick a favorite in this one. Obviously, I love watching the world champion play chess, but I also do like rooting for people that are in St. Louis. <laughs> What's happened here? A little white's gone up some material. It was a little trick, or it was the black the one doing the better tactics. Holy cow, that was a nice little tactics there. Julian in the house. Anish is here too. Good to have you guys. If you've just dialed it in here, Magnus has just started playing Akshat Chandra, and he is 11 and 0 so far. So we have we've passed adoption. The only question now is, will it be a double adoption, or will Akshat start getting on the board here? Maybe he just needs to adjust to to playing to Magnus's level here. It's not easy. He's down a lot of time here too. Whoa, big think on that <laughs> that weird move. Neo is in the house. Good to have you, Neo. I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope everyone's staying safe out there. I know it's not always easy, but uh, unlike winning this position, which is really easy. So Magnus wins 12 and oh, casually adopting a scrub 2900. Yeah, it's harsh, but yeah, that's what's happening. His record is 17. Um, did he get 17 in a row against somebody? He won. We got 19 and a half out of 20 total points in his match against Zidolko. So I do remember that. It was, probably was 17 in a row, and then it was like a draw, not even a loss, and then two more wins in a row. Something like that against Zidolko. So, um, did Ali Reza already play him? I didn't I didn't really check out. He, has, he played like 60 other games today, 60 or 70 other games before this match today, so I'm not sure. Was he playing Ali Reza again? Did, uh, did Ali Reza get him? Seems very possible. Ali Reza does seem to to get Magnus all the time. So, Corn Raid, welcome, welcome. Glad to see you guys. Glad to see a lot of the regulars. Try boy, boy, boy. I do know Akshat. He lives in St. Louis. Uh, his brother actually works for the chess club. So, 
Yes, I do know him very well. Which is why it's very difficult for me to decide who I should be mentally rooting for. So I'm probably not gonna. I'm probably just gonna sit back, enjoy the match, see what happens, and just can't go wrong. When you're watching Magnus, it just you can't go wrong. Yeah, so this could be Akshat's first chance here. This looks like a seriously, seriously good pawn structure for black. One huge pawn snake island here. <laughs> and eight seconds for Magnus. Pawns are still hanging. Magnus gives it up. There we go. Akshat on the board. So it's now 12 to 1. What is up, Subham? Welcome, welcome. Glad to see you. Um... Yeah, we just saw Akshat Chandra get his very first win in this match. So, will that be the first of many? Or will Magnus kick it back into gear and continue to crush this guy? We're going to see. But yeah. At some point, I'm going to need... Supplies. I just threw this together. I got so excited. Magnus was on. I threw it together very quick. Somehow, I need coffee. I need water. We'll see how long I can survive without these essentials. My body is about 75% water and about 25% coffee. So, we'll see how long I last. Also, if you are challenging me, I will not be accepting challenges right now. At least, not until this Magnus ends. I do want to check it out. So, alright, this one. Looking good, but still complicated. The next gen low. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're with us. Hopefully, you're enjoying a little of the, the Magnus game here. So now, down two bishops. We saw Magnus win. Hawkshot down two bishops. We saw Magnus get a big win there. Where's Feruja? He wants revenge. So did they play today? Now I need to investigate this. Open this link in a new window so you guys don't see it. Uh, who else was he? He, was, he played 75 bullet games today. So he was playing Rebecca Harris. That's uh, Naroditsky. So he was, playing, he was playing Rebecca Harris. I guess I can go check what the score of that match was. Um, this was about... Well, this was about 21 hours ago. So this was last night. Um... And the score of this match, I guess I can't find it easily, but, but yeah. Martin, how's it going? Chess player 49 is in here. Glad to have you. Um, yeah, so let's get back into the action here. So we saw Magnus come back and win another game. This one is interesting. There was a fork. So, yeah. Games get very complicated, very tactical, very quickly. <laughs> Anyone that says, say my username, please. I'm assuming is a trap. Sonum Hypnos is in the chat. <laughs> I don't even understand what the trap is. But probably. Probably. If you're walking around saying things like, say my username. I'm just going to assume it's a trap. No trap. All right. Iron Queen. Thanks for coming in. Ah, he just trades to get to this winning endgame. Noticing a pattern. He's just simply trading down when he's winning. Tantru is in the house. Tantru is in the house. Good to have a lot of new faces here. <laughs> Julian, you know what you did. Get him, Nightbot. Way too many symbols. Alright, so Magnus is back. He's won the last two games here. And now... Nice symmetrical pawn structure, in a way. Four on four, three on three. Let's see how this one gets addressed. So Magnus is asking some questions on the queen side. Not going to be easy to defend that A pawn. 
looks like a pawn is gonna go I could also now take the C pawn he had to sit there and think about it for a second yeah so Magnus up a pawn lots of lots of good play there on the queen side V sim thanks for the follow <laughs> harmonic is in here I always trust nightbot if you don't like my nightbot you can blame Lawrence who set it up <laughs> But I trust his judgment full-heartedly and respect whatever settings he put it on. So here we go. Still lots of pressure on the queen side. Getting, getting a pawn back? Nope, I guess not. How will black handle this one? He's pushing the e-pawn. Very interesting. The black king is sort of cut off. Yep. Flan, that's uh, that's Akshat Chandra that we're watching. So Magnus did win quite a few in a row. He uh, he more than adopted Akshat. Then Akshat got back on the board, and then Magnus was able to win two in a row. Now he's got a queen. So he's got a queen. There's not a lot of time. No time to even resign. Boom! Checkmate. Not checkmate, but close. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. E4. A lot of. A lot of good stuff. A C3 Sicilian. If you guys see the video that comes out in about one hour on my channel, you might know the first couple moves about this opening. But yeah, very interesting. So we're seeing lots of trades. An interesting structure is that C pawn weak gives a pawn but the h6 pawn is also a target so if the bishop retreats probably bishop takes h6 f5 played wow is that bishop trapped uh oh oh and then he just trades the queens too very interesting approach i guess maybe he had to trade the queens there not what you want but magnus will now pick it up turn the turbo boosters on and we'll see if he can apply enough pressure. He's getting a pawn. So he, get, he got one pawn back. So, yeah. There's going to be pressure on that C pawn. Is he going to be able to hold his C pawn? It's, the whole structure is collapsing without that pawn. Alright, so he's going to pick up the B pawn. He lost all his center pawns. So, still winning for Akshat. But, he's finding a way. Akshat's doing a pretty good job here. Doing a good job neutralizing anything Magnus wants to do. You guys, is this really bug you? The spectator room? Is that really... Is that really a bother? I think... It might have been you that said it last time. But if that's really a bother, it can disappear. We can make this happen. Um, move myself. Is this better? Uh, I need to make sure. Is that a little bit better? Just put this. Hopefully, it doesn't bug too many people. Might need to make that even just a little bit smaller here. Does that make it more enjoyable? All right. People say it's better. Good to have you, Iraqli. We'll just close that out. I like a little bit of purple in my life. And yeah, we'll just make it perfect here. Can you guys see that well enough? Let's see. Alright, let's try that. And let's see. Alright, Drew. Thank you for the follow, Drew. Alright, we got like an Alakine chase variation going on. That's very cool. Oops. Hide that right there. And then leave in and this. Alright. So now I'm about ready to get back here and focus. Looks like White has a big attack. We'll see what happens. 
Rook is coming in too. Looks promising. So yeah, will Magnus be able to get a huge crushing attack here? F5 played, looks good. F6 coming. Boom, that's a win. So, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six in a row now. So can he adopt again? And yeah, very interesting opening. I do like when we get to see a lot of these these different openings. B8 is in the house. Yeah, baby. Good to have you, B8. Why vampire chicken? I don't know. What else would I be called? I also have a very serious question. So on my my YouTube channel, I need your guys' help. This is a very important branding decision that I need to make in the next couple days here. Because once you get to 100 people, 100 subscribers on a YouTube channel, you can have a custom URL. So it's time for me to decide, is the name of my channel going to be Jonathan Schrantz, or is it going to be something like Vampire Chicken Chess? How should I brand it? I have to be very careful. This is an important, this is a big decision. I'm hoping to maximize the number of people that come to my channel. Casey. What is happening? We got uh, Magnus Carlsen here. He is playing Akshat Chandra, and Magnus continues to win and win. So that's seven in a row now. He already adopted Akshat by winning 10 games in a row earlier. So we'll see. And now we got this Evans Gambit. It keeps getting played. I keep seeing him played. If I'm Vampire Chicken, who's Zolpi? Um, I'm actually, I'm known by many names. I like. I like a bit of mystery. Every site, I have different names. But I can corner the market on vampires slash chickens and chess lovers. So people into chickens and chess and vampires. I would own that market. Um, yeah, so I think probably it is right. So next gen low and, and Julian, it probably is right to... Call the channel Jonathan Schrantz, because I think that's what a lot of people actually will be searching for. GCH, good to have you. Well, Philo, so I'm already, I mean, I'm already kind of on YouTube, because I made a bunch of videos for the St. Louis Chess Club. Um, one of them being, you know, like a million and a half view video, and a lot of other big popular ones. So, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to go with Jonathan Schrantz. <laughs> you always find it difficult when you search for vampire chicken. I hear ya. <laughs> Alright. So what is going on here? That is a lot of pawns for a rook. And the pawns are all over the place. But that H-pawn, that H-pawn looks like a good one. Alright. I no longer think that H-pawn's a good one. Dr. Grimer, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Boom, that's the tactic. Yeah, so I'm probably going to call it Jonathan Schrantz. I think that's going to be the name of my channel. Z Slide, good to have you. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch the Carlson stream until this this all ends so it's nice i was waiting he's actually he was online before this for at least 30 minutes or so that i noticed and i was just kind of waiting watching realizing if he ever uh came online that i'd come in and watch because i always get excited when we get to see these matches and it's usually the kind of thing that people then are, are talking about for a long time like after a match like this you know people are talking here was the the Ali reza match did you guys see the naroditsky match you know, people do talk about these matches for quite a long time, so it's impressive. It is a treat. I don't know how long all of these Magnus matches will last, but I do know if I played one, two, three, four in a match, I would crush him. 
That's what I know. No, but people talk about him. They just, at least on Twitch, there's a lot of people are like, "Did you see that match?" And people care. I mean, it's it's Magnus. Yeah, it's some maybe meaningless bullet match to these guys, but. People remember it. If you are playing Magnus and you like beat him in a match, even if it's just some silly hundred game match on the internet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Here it comes. Um, people are gonna remember it. People are gonna take note. There's you know, if you're Ali Reza, they're gonna say, Wow, that guy beat Magnus. Is he gonna be next world champ? What's going on there? Yeah, Arn, I am still doing stuff with uh, the St. Louis Chess Club. I'm working from home these days. Definitely, you'll see me on the stream there after everybody gets to return to work. But, but yeah, still work at the club. Still loving what I do. So, you are officially playing. I didn't respond. I need to respond. Um, there's going to be some match. I don't have a lot of details on it. So... Yeah, a lot of exciting St. Louis chess content coming soon. You'll have to stay tuned to learn all about it. But fans of Mike Comer, Matches, Julian, and me will be delighted in a week or two. Yeah, there's one chess club out there. I'm talking about the good one. The best chess club in the world. That's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I don't need any details. That's kind of how it is. Mike says, hey, the team needs you. We need you to play. You jump on board. You say, yes, sir. Just tell me when I'm playing. I'll fire up the computer. Whoa, E5? Is that a mouse slip? Could have been a could have been a mouse slipper right there. I'm guessing E6 was intended. Subham, thank you for the follow. I know. Who are we going to play? Is it going to be the Marshal? Is it the Atlanta Chess Club? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, yeah, we're trying to plan a lot of a lot of cool stuff, so stay tuned. If there's anything you guys would like to see that I could potentially facilitate, I would be interested to know. Like, what kind of content, what kind of matches, what kind of stuff do you guys want, you know? We have all this extra time where everybody's staying at home. So, there's a lot of time to do fun stuff. The unbeatable Jonathan Schrantz. That's funny. Yeah, I should just <laughs> I should try to I should try to use up that unbeatable as much as I can. I mean, in general, and it's also it's not just for people to watch the videos, but it's for my own reference. I do try to give an adjective or or some other kind of word to every opening, you know, um, like the feisty French. And that kind of reminds you too, it reminds me when I play it, I need to be more feisty when I play the French. So it's as much of helping you guys as it is to help me. Anyway, who understands? H and F pawn end games and when they're a draw and when they're not and when Magnus gets flagged. Dang, no adoption. That was nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nope, he snuck it in. He snuck one he snuck one game past me. So, so I think there's been two adoptions. There's been two adoptions today. But uh But yeah, this is definitely the roughest match I've seen for the competitors against Magnus. Um uh, Akshot has been having a hard time here. Directly, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. CNA, obviously. I don't know any coordinates, so it's not that obvious to me. And when he's black, the coordinates are flipped around, so it gets very confusing very fast. <laughs> yeah, this structure is also, if you guys, um, thank you for the follow. Sergo Nemo? I'm going to go with Sergo Nemo on that one. Um, if you guys just follow, even if you don't know all these openings, just the, the pawn structures themselves have been very, very interesting. A lot of them have been very unbalanced. So. 
yeah, it's good to see. Like, how often do you see the this particular structure, this three against that one? Oh, nice little tactic, nice little fork there. Always feels good. I'm assuming Magnus also feels proud when he finds that simple little tactic. Ah, greetings from the UK. Good to have you, Limescale. Glad you could join us today. We are checking out Magnus versus Akshat Chandra. And this one's looking good for Akshat with a queen and a very small time edge. Can he figure out a way? This could be tricky. There's a lot of defense. There's a lot of fortress potential here. Not so easy. Whoop, there goes the queen. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The queen fell off the board. Magnus is back in charge. He's got two seconds to do this, mate. I think he's figured it out. He's going to do it the easy way. Boop. There it is. 0.09 on the clock. 0.09 all the time you need. <laughs> Wilson, thanks for joining us. Savage Dragon in the house. Ah, oh, Savage Dragon, did you play in the staff tournament today? Mr. Gripley, thank you for the follow. What happened in the staff tournament? I wasn't able to make it today. Easy win. Plenty of time. <laughs> no, I mean, I have my guess, and I said who I thought it was while I was playing him. I've decided not to publish those. I have them uploaded on YouTube, but I have not published them, because I'm not, I'm not sure. Nobody's told me that they don't want it posted, but I assume a guy like Julian, a guy like Savage Dragon, they probably don't want their info out there. So I've decided not to post it, and I won't post it unless I get everybody's approval on it. And I'm not going to go around asking everybody, so chances are nobody will ever see it. But I did, I had one guess as to who Savage Dragon was. So yeah, two in a row here for Magnus. What opening will it be? Boom. He's loving this. We're getting so many of these, uh, these whatchamacallers. Evan's Gambits. This is like his go-to in Blitz. I can post whatever you want from you. Okay. Ha ha ha. You don't know what door you've opened, Julian. I can post anything with his name on it. Anything. And I know I could, but it's not just Julian, too. Um, there's probably other people that I don't know if they would or would not mind being on the internet. So, and these are also co-workers, so I want to be extra careful. Philo Saint. How do I feel about the Carlson invitation? I am excited for it. It's going to be awesome. That's a ton of money. Uh, $250,000 for a relatively quick tournament. I mean, it's... I don't know how many days it is. It's only a couple days, right? So, yeah, turns out Evan's Gambit is a difficult one. The Rook is hanging, but do you have an attack? Is the claim you have an attack? I don't see it. I think he blundered a Rook. Uh-oh. Looks like he blundered a Rook. Taking his time. Okay, he's found some tricky line. I don't believe it. He's trying to smash through, but he's running out of pieces. Not going to be easy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's getting tricky, though. Wow. Uh. Yeah. All right. But black wins. But the time. Still going to... The winner of this game is still going to be the faster mover. There goes the queen. All right. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, so Carlson's organizing a $25,000 Invitational Rapid Tournament on Chess24. It will be a blast. Chaser no straight! What's going on with the chaser no straight? I have a straight no chaser. Is there also a chaser no straight? <laughs> What's going on there? But thank you for the follow. You lost your account? <laughs> okay, so that's you. That's not some funny guy. There's a knight. Oh, no, it goes for the pun. What's going on? You in trouble again, Magnus? Uh-oh. Magnus is in trouble again.
Um, so this is Akshat Chandra. This is Baba Ramdev. That's Akshat Chandra, who lives in the St. Louis area. So, just met X. Good to have you. Thanks for the follow. So, yeah, Magnus looked like he was in a lot of trouble, but now it's not that bad. Can he take that bishop? It looked very dangerous to take that bishop. He decided against it. After the capture, White was going to take this rook and then get an attack against the king. So, Black did not go for it. <laughs> was there a queen hung? I may have missed it. H-pawn getting serious. Alright, so another one of these end games. This time, though, Magnus is way up on the clock. So, that should be hugely in his favor. Though, White is starting to pick up some pawns, but with five seconds, it's hard to imagine that being enough. Black has a queen now. Black has two queens. That's a lot of queens. Still. It's easier to move faster when you don't have any pieces. But Magnus figured it out. Got the checkmate. So just today, that is 25 to 3 in Magnus's favor. So, yeah. Magnus does seem to do very well against Akshat here. He's too strong and too fast. Yeah, and I think I've been, I guess, spoiled by the other high-rated players that Magnus has been playing recently on this site. Because this is what I was used to. I was used to Magnus just crushing people, you know, like 25 to 3, some huge monster scores. But then, you know, he's playing Ali Reza, he's playing Naraditsky, he's playing Shadalko, and he's not really racking up the score, like, huge like this. So, I remember just from the times before... I guess the time before the uh, the virus was out there and we were all, I would just see him and he would just smash everybody. It would be just like this. Whenever you'd watch him, he would just absolutely destroy people. Um, but it's been a while since I've seen it, so it's kind of cool. We're getting to watch Magnus in good form today. Playing well, getting lots of wins, racking it up. <laughs> He's playing a young man's game. Magnus is getting up there. Let's see, how old is Magnus? Oops. He's 29. Is Magnus ever in bad form? Yeah, I mean, it's it's relative to, you know, when he's in good form. <laughs> but yeah, everybody has good and bad form. And it's just kind of relative to what he normally does. He's getting up there. He's getting up there. You gotta imagine he is past the peak. So, question becomes how long he can maintain this form. Well, yeah, it seems to be doing fine to me. Way up on the clock, a pawn all the way down the board, and I did think to myself, if that bishop goes here, there is a rook to d8. So, all right, another one of these structures. Magnus does seem to do well in this structure, probably because the structure is pretty good for white. But all right, now it's kind of become like a Rui Lopez structure. Probably the worst thing you can do against Magnus is play a Rui Lopez type structure. He's pretty good at that. Yeah, Vichy, obviously, is uh, is still at it, doing very well. So yeah, obviously you can play into your 40s, into your 50s, and still play at an incredible high level. That's a free piece. Boop. <laughs> nice tactic. Nice little fork. He's going to pick up the bishop. All right, just Max. What's my rating and any tips to get better? I am 1900, both USCF and FIDE. And uh, 
how to improve kind of probably depends on what your level is. If you tell me what, what your rating is, I probably can help you um, the best. But yeah, I just saw somewhere, it was actually very interesting. They, it was somebody that was selling some product and it was, they said there's like, here's five things. The five things you need to be a well-rounded chess player. There goes a piece. And it was, okay, openings are one part of it. Tactics are one part of it. End games are one part of it. And then there's like studying the classics and um, and that. If you're 16 to 1700-ish, so a lot of it is going to be playing. A lot of it is going to be um, like, a lot of it's going to be tactics. Are you losing a lot of games because you hang pieces? Are you losing a lot of games because you don't know the plan after the opening phase? Um, so I think trying to identify where your your weaknesses, like what's the biggest, the hardest thing, and training specifically that, which usually is hard because you're not training it because it's not fun or it's boring or whatever. But if you are trying to improve, spending a little bit of time, um, sometimes you don't know the plan. So I think that's that's one of the things you should focus on. You should focus on middle games. The openings are good to know, but they're not the be-all, end-all at that level. It usually comes down to just simple blunders, and it's coming down to not knowing the plans. You're gonna once you get some position, what do you do? And I think a lot of that comes from watching games. A lot of the classic games will help a lot because the you'll see a lot of the ideas and watch. When you do go over an opening, watch something that, like, go deeper and try to play guess the move a lot. I think that's one thing that's really, really helped me. Whatever openings you like to play, watch some of the, the best players play that opening, but play guess the move, you know? Um, see if you can go slow, take about a minute or two on every move and see if you can, you can try to guess what they're going to do, because then you're kind of guessing what the plan is. And if you watch a bunch of games, you're going to learn plans pretty quickly. So interesting, allowing this this broken structure on the queen side. Also interesting, he took back with the queen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have good and bad days. And I have a new I have a new theory. You're welcome, Matt. And this is for Julian, mostly. I think I know how to help Julian improve. I spend most of my time thinking, how can I help Julian? He needs a lot of help. That guy has got a lot of room to improve. And I'm just the guy to help him. And what do you think of this theory, Julian? Here's how you get your rating up higher than it is. Before you play a game, you're going to play a blitz game. Your goal is to get your blitz rating to whatever, as high as you possibly can, Julian. Here's what you need to do. You just ask yourself before the game, Am I going to win this game? That's it. That's all you got to do. And if you're there, if you're mentally there, you play. If you're not, you don't. That's it. So you're welcome, Julian, for the fantastic advice. And we will see you get to 2,700 pretty soon. So you are welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to criticize the anti-chess, but it seems to be working for Julian. I don't know how. I don't know how. Guy plays a lot of, uh, a lot of anti-chess, and his rating keeps going up, so if the rating keeps going up, I guess play more anti-chess, too. Only play if you're gonna win, and play more anti-chess. I think that's the two-fold plan. Julian can, uh, can start today, and he should be able to get to 2,700. Whoa! Nico Theo! Nico Theo! What just happened? 